Having access to the right systems and tools in place has been underscored as a prerequisite to enabling inclusion of women in the financial technology space of Uganda. So even as we drive technology, we also have to start to teach the women to see what kind of structures can we, can we put. Do you have, uh, it may not necessarily be a board, but do you have a group of people who you talk with, who you drive, who you talk about strategy on how to grow these businesses? And it's that most of the women businesses are really sole proprietorships. During the panel discussions at this year's Women Investment Breakfast in Kampala, women were celebrated for demonstrating superior financial discipline compared to their male counterparts. The loans, the whole loans that are being given by MTN today, we have 46% are women. Women are receiving these loans. But key to note, when it comes to repayment, the women are actually better at repayment. So the reason why possibly men take the higher portion is because their wallets uh, have more money, they are doing more transactions uh, than the women, but out of the women that have actually received the loans, 46%, the repayment for the women is better. While women in sub-Saharan Africa are increasingly engaging in investment activities, they encounter numerous barriers related to access to finance, societal norms, financial literacy, networking opportunities, and personal responsibilities that hinder their full participation in the investment landscape. Usually it's a catch-22 situation with the banks. They want you to have a lot of turnover in order to give you money. And yet we know that most of Ugandan businesses die before the third year. So what are you guys doing as the big people who have earned that good turnover? In addition to the capital markets, there was a powerful call to action for investing in products and services tailored for Uganda's youth, who represent a staggering 70% of the population under the age of 30. Wadulo Makanold, UBC News.